Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is interview number four now. I'm really excited about this one. I've got Lockie O'Brien. Uh, Lockie, oh man, it's so so good that you could join us. So, and I I'm, just love your background photo. You're getting into the Zoom mood. Uh, welcome, mate. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, looking forward to sharing my experiences since I've been at Brunswick. That's been fantastic. Yeah, well, uh, let's let's start with uh, just getting to know you a little bit. Uh, with the previous interview, these, you know, we kind of know a little bit more about them. And I think a lot of people know the name Lockie O'Brien. And we see you like the photo that we've got in the background here on, on a podium. But uh, just tell us about some of your most um, your most memorable wins, some of the medals that you're most fond of. And uh, just a very quick summary of your, your cycling achievements today. Yep. Um, yeah, so I guess um, probably my best achievements would be um, pretty much every year I've been third um, third at nationals. Um, every national I've competed, I've done about four now, I think. Um, and yeah, and I've, each year I've gotten faster and stronger. So I, um, I'm working on that and getting even faster and stronger now, sort of thing. So, um, but probably to the date, my, my best accolade I'd say was um, riding the seven peaks. So I've ridden it twice now. Um, yeah, just what well, I guess everyone knows that, but just a quick little heads up. That's basically riding the seven Alpine resorts around Victoria. And um, I'm actually the first person to do them in a hand cycle, all seven. Um, so, yeah, and I do it every first year now. First person in Australia. First person uh, in Australia yeah, to do yeah. that. Wow. First person to hand cycle to ride the seven peaks. So, yeah, like people have written lots of them, but never accumulated all of them. So, yeah, I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> well, I, I would say that's your biggest achievement. That's incredible. And it, it, isn't it great that, when you talk about your achievements and as you get older, you look back and people always think medals and national titles are big things and they certainly are, but something like that being the first person and just knowing the degree of difficulty, that must give you great satisfaction. It, de it definitely does. And um, I like to, I guess I like to, once I make an achievement, I like to get another goal to achieve even more straight away. Like that's something I tend to, tend to do. And um, once I did the seven peaks, uh, I really enjoyed it. Even though it was a lot of suffering. Um, I decided I was like, I want to um, now want to go ride the Alps in Europe and the Dolomites and just had every mountain in the world. Um, so I said to myself, I'm going to do the seven peaks every year and try and get as fast as I can up them, faster each year. Um, and this year I managed to take like 30 minutes off and an hour off some of them. So I've come a long way. Um, and yeah, and then in a few years when I've saved up enough money, I'll go and do go to Europe and. Just, the Alps. It, it's every cyclist dream, right? So that, that's that's great. Um, I'd, I'd love to say that um, I'll be able to do it with you or do the same things as you, but uh, every year goes by and I go, gee, I wish I'd gone. And now right now in lockdown, you wish you'd had all those trips and you'd done it, but uh, I guess we'll get back to it very soon. And, and in the meantime, someone like you, uh, I know how hard you've been training because you put up these, these posts uh, real hardcore stuff. I mean, you're doing lots and lots of climbing and um, you know, possibly weight work. I mean, I, 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 just, I can't keep up. You're always posting these awesome gains. Um, what have you been doing? Yeah, so basically um, after I had seven peaks this year, you know, I just took like sort of a week off, um, as you'd imagine, I'm pretty cooked. And then um, my coach, Stephen Lane, is, um, is, is a real champion. He um, he realised that you know there's no competitions coming up, and he wants to keep his athletes motivated. So he designed what he calls the HPT Games, and basically it's all testing yourself in every way, like most amount of climbing you've done, you know, the best eight minute power or something you can sustain. Lots of hard, hard sort of um, efforts and games, I guess. And um, he pins everyone against each other, and it's more for the fun of it and keep him motivated. And um, yeah, that's really, really kept me motivated. So I've been doing some short, hard efforts and. Now, more recently, some longer stuff. And um, I just ordered, I ordered a gym a while ago when I knew things were closed. Um, gyms were closed. And then that came about a week and a half ago. So I've just been jumping on that and doing some strength work. And, yeah, it definitely makes a big difference. But, yeah, lots of suffering, but it's definitely it's definitely worth it. And you're taking advantage of it in the right way, which is good. So you, you've got you've got probably um, a, a, a set of competitors that you pitch yourself against. and I know we were talking uh, previously about this uh, uh, around one or two competitors who um, you kind of keep an eye on each other and you you try and outdo mm -hmm. each other. That that that's a bit of healthy competition. Yeah, of course. That's um, 
I couldn't live without it, to be honest with you. Like, if, if there's no one there, then it's, there's nothing to strive, strive to, for sure. Um, yeah, you always do that. You always sort of, like, that's what's good about Strava is that you look at someone else's ride and you go, oh, and they, especially when someone beats a segment, as everybody knows, you go, it, it alerts you. If you had the KOM, it alerts you. So you look and you go, oh, straight away, the next day you're out. You're out trying to beat it. <laughs> so I think, um, I think it's good, good competition. It's healthy competition. And the, the, the thing I like best about um, guys I race against is, you know, they've helped, helped me where I need to get better. You know, like they could, they could easily go, I'm not going to help you because, you know, you beat us. But they're just happy to help and very friendly. And um, Alex Welsh, the, the national champion, um, he actually sells the bikes and um, he helps people have a good bike set up and everything. So... Very friendly in that, and the competition is fantastic. That's great. Uh, I want to get a little bit uh, personal because these interviews have been great to reveal some things about people that we may not have known, uh, and and even even people who know each other uh, are commenting. I, I didn't know, you know, so and so did something. So Sarah Giganti said last night on his Zwift ride that she had no idea of Catalina's setup in in Able. I would have thought that she knew. So these can be very revealing. I know a little bit about you. Um, your background and work-wise, um, you don't mind cooking. Um, you're particularly fond of um, food from the New Orleans area. Yesterday, you were smoking um, some food. Uh, what, what's your what's what's your background? You've got a qualification in something. Yeah, so um, I guess a little bit of backstory about that is that um, after I had my accident um, ten years ago, rugby injury, um, um, I, I remember I had this teacher, sorry, this um, head of head of studies. And he gave this speech at school about you've always got to have like a main passion that drives you and something that keeps you, um, you know, interested sort of thing in, in your spare time. And um, I, I knew the second I lost rugby, I needed to find something else. So after I left school, I was just looking around trying to find something to love. And then funny enough, I, because after my injury, I got a bit sloppy and I wasn't playing rugby, obviously, because, you know, I was in the wheelchair. So I got, I got quite fat, <laughs> excuse the language. But um, so I decided, I was like, all right, I got to, I got to do something about this. So I got to try and eat healthier. And then I, um, it's funny. I um, got into cooking with Jamie Oliver. What's Tim? And I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Like I never really cooked before. And then um, from there, I was like, I, I want to learn to cook properly. Like I don't want to just sort of do like a course here and there. So I looked up courses and then jumped into this course. And it turns out it was to be a chef. Um, so it was about a year, a year worth of studying, no apprenticeship or anything. It's the quick way, I guess. Um, and then the problem was is that I didn't end up cooking healthy. I ended up cooking like delicious fatty, fatty style <laughs> foods. So I sort of went the other way around. So then um, not long after that, I, um, I got into my mate's triathlete. And I got into, he's like, do a triathlon with me. So I um, got into the water, learned how to swim. And then he's like, oh, you need to get a bike. So I spoke to Alex and then he gave me a good carbon bike. Because he said, you might as well get a good comfy one. I'm like, okay. Jumped into the bike. And I was like, okay, this is it. I love this. Like, I just love riding, enjoy it. And then I um, still did the triathlon, but eventually I got rid of the other stuff and then stuck with the cycling and then um, jumped into a race and that was it. And turned back sort of thing. So, um, and then, yeah, sorry, I'm talking about the cooking, but um, basically... No, that's all right. That's good. You know, you go. Yeah, so that's, that's sort of, yeah, so I'm a qualified chef back in 2015 or 14, I finished and um, love cooking. I, I don't work as a chef anymore. I work as a chef in catering and then... The pathway took me out of it, and then um, I still love cooking, and I'm still constantly watching cooking videos, and it's a very good hobby to have. So as long as I'm exercising a lot, which I am, so I can sort of balance it out a bit. What were you making yesterday? What were you smoking? What was it that you were doing? Yeah, so I, I had a smoker for a couple of years, and um, I hadn't fully set it up, and then I don't know, just got motivation why I'm sort of in isolation. I'm like, okay, I've got to just set it up. Like I really want to, and then. Put it together and then um, I've always had in my mind the first thing I'm going to cook is a brisket. I'm like, it's classic. So I put in, um, I made a Creole seasoning. It's like a sort of New Orleans style seasoning. Um, I've had that because I do a lot of New Orleans cooking, so I have that seasoning anyway. Um, and I rubbed that on there a couple of days earlier and then put it in the smoker and just smoked it for about four hours. And then um, usually you do it longer and slower, but yeah, um, it was good. It was really delicious. And then I was so excited by it. I did some wings, some buffalo wings as well in there. Whoa. Delicious. <laughs> and um, have you been making bread like everyone else has been during this isolation time, or that's just a bridge too far? Um, uh, I don't know. I've, I've done bread um, previously. 
I've um, done heaps of different breads and I guess that was a phase, but um, I did get a pasta machine because like, I think it was about um, three weeks or a month ago, I went in, couldn't find any pasta. And like, I used to just have it, have it always sitting around. And I was like, it's frustrated. So I'm like, I just went straight away online, ordered a pasta machine, a good one. And then um, as soon as I got it, obviously pasta's back on the shelf. That's how it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to probably start doing some pasta soon and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so I love fresh pasta. I love fresh ingredients. So I try and do everything from scratch where I can. Well, as we slowly open up uh, things again and we, we, we're going to start doing motor pace this week and hopefully, you know, maybe <clears throat> three to six months' time, we might have a pasta night and it could be Lockie's pasta. Yeah, yeah. done. I'm down <laughs> for that. <clears throat> well, it's on recording now, so you've made a commitment. So. Ah. <laughs> pasta or pasta or snag night you know you have a choice <laughs> oh, yeah yeah that'd be that's that's good yeah so glenn we don't want to bump glenn from his barbecue because it's very precious <laughs> but we can compliment it that's what we'll do um you so, so you were just starting to touch on uh work and and the, the chefing career didn't really um take you anywhere but it's a passion and you keep doing it uh you you, you spoke about your injury uh and and the resilience and the strength to then you know, pick yourself up, even if there is a period where you, like you said, you might put on weight, etc. But then you, you know, you get onto triathlons and become cycling, etc. It seems to be part of your makeup that you're always looking on the on the bright side. Um, you, you've you've um, been a youth work, worker as well. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Um, funny enough, I got sort of jumped into it because I applied to be chef there and. They, they like my attitude and they like the relatability of, I have more of a visual problem, like a, there's a lack of better words, but um, so they thought maybe they could relate and in some ways that worked well. Um, and yeah, I really, I really enjoyed youth work for the two years. I learned a lot about myself and um, how to help people better. Um, and yeah, that was incredible. So basically that, that, that place is called St. Joseph's North Melbourne Flexible Learning Centre. Um, and basically mo most of the kids have a trauma-based background. Um, so, you know, every day to day life is very, very different for them. So um, basically my job is to, to help them um, and refer them to, you know, further psychologists if they need or youth services or like help them get a job and help them sort of encourage them to make, to figure out what they want to do in life and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. That's, um, that, that, that's great. You, uh, you obviously have gone through your own traumas, right? And so is there a, uh, who's your Lockie O'Brien, you know, or who are the set of people that, that helped you uh, during the, the time of need that, you know, after your injury, it would have been a very traumatic period. There would be some people that really helped you get through that? Yeah, de definitely, definitely is. Uh, um, I think my family were quite amazing. Um, yeah, my brother was uh, very supportive. I lived with him for a few years. Uh, my sister has, um, really good, really good listener and everything like that. Um, I guess my mum and dad. Um, yeah, people very helpful, but I guess um, just we can segment this into role models, I guess. Um, I definitely took, I don't have one little role model. I, I have, I pick, pick things I like about people and trying to, uh, you know, aspire to that. Like, for example, Alex, whilst the way he trains and his motivation, all that sort of stuff, I think um, he's always consistent. And, you know, if he gets turned down with bad news, he'll just keep going sort of thing. So I guess I took that that on and then you've got like I guess it's very controversial to say but Lance Armstrong like like he's obviously a bit of a cheater and that sort of stuff but just his focus and drive was not, not like anyone else no one's like that I don't think um so that I take on that side of it and um it's more recently that's really just helped me obviously I'm not going to go to the level of drugs but um I think uh, just the drive of um of him and then Oh, heaps of things like Tony, Tony Robbins is a big influence in my life about changing my life and that sort of stuff. So um, on a motivational sense and sticking to my goals, I've been reading his book and love that. So yeah, they've got a lot of different role models and that sort of stuff. And um, I guess cooking is Gordon Ramsay, um, not the aggressive side, but they're how good he is as a cook. <laughs> um, but yeah. Ramsay, Armstrong. I, I get it. You know, I, I think I can, I can, I can understand the attributes of those people that are, you know, the, the, the worthy ones are about being, you know, aggressive, but not overly aggressive, being determined and all that sort of thing. And 
Um, you know, we, we talk about role models. Uh, I've got a, I'm gonna do my, my trick here that I've been doing lately with all these pictures. What about this bloke? Why don't you talk <laughs> about uh, Gabe? Yeah, so um, I have so much respect for Gabe. Um, you know, he's, he's, had, he's had some tough, um, tough challenges in life, but he always keeps getting up. No matter what, he always gets up, um, which I have a lot of respect for him in that way. Um, and I wouldn't be in Brunswick if it wasn't for him. Like, I wouldn't be in part of Brunswick Cycling Club. Um, you know, like years ago, he was worried about getting on the road. And then I just said to him, let's go, let's go out in that Whittlesea way and go on the road there. And, you know, and, you know, and that made a big difference for him and happier. And then it made me happier seeing him happy. So, um, and then after a while, we were doing our weekly indoor sessions, um, we're jumping on Zwift um, and training hard with each other. And I pushed him pretty hard and he pushed me hard. So um, I think he's just, he's just a great person. He's got a lot of good energy, very happy, happy, excitable person. And, um, you know, when you think of Brunswick, it's almost hard not to think of Gabe, isn't it? Like, he's just, um, he's just, he's always part of the club. And um, yeah, I just like his attitude. It's good. Oh, we all do. And, and he, he's one of the first to comment, um, praise. Um, he'll send messages on the side with feedback. Uh, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's a terrific human being, as, as, as you are. Um, and I think that, you know, the more, uh, the more that we appreciate the efforts of, of, the, of, of our members who, who make significant contributions, the better. Because not everybody is going to be the elite cyclists. Um, but everyone can be an elite human being, and and that's what that's what we're full of. We've got a lot of people who, who are who are excellent, and uh, you know even just the work we've done in the last few weeks just to get ready for some sort of return to normalcy. The the efforts of people like Cam, um, and and uh, and the guys that appeared on our video, Oscar and and uh, and, and Luke and even uh, Tara, just getting getting us all ready. Uh, they're the people that make a club. So I mean we're so glad that you're part of our club. Um, and, but you're part of the community, right? So we're, 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 we're a club. Um, I've always maintained that every club is great and every club has got great people. And, um, you know, we just happen to be members of certain clubs, but, it, you know, some clubs do things a little bit differently and we've got a, um, a great um, a great club rooms, I guess, which can help us. And you've been there, right? You've raced at Brunswick. Um, this is a pain face uh, moment, this one. Uh, good photo. It's a great photo. Uh, was that club champs? Yeah, so I um I, I don't really get on the track much because there's no real there's no hand cycle real events. Um, and then there is an hour record. Didn't, I'm not I'm not saying I'm gonna do it at Runs Week, <laughs> but um yeah. So I think um Dave Dave was like you got to get down to the the club track champs. Um, so I'm like why not have a bit of fun sort of thing and then um put on the Brunswick jersey and had a bit of a crack and um yeah as you could tell in that photo. I was working pretty hard. Um, even though you're going fast in the velodrome, um, you're still working hard. I know it's not up a hill, but it's definitely just as hard. And um, yeah, I try and get in. I prefer the road stuff a lot more, but um, I think it's fun to get down. You know, it's such a different dimension. I'm um, going on the track in a hand cycle, but it's good fun. Yeah, and and it's not smooth at Brunswick. It's the beauty of the track. It's imperfect, right? Which is which is great. You do get some uphill. If you do three hours of riding, you end up climbing about 200 metres. How does that happen <laughs> on, a, on a velodrome? But you do, right? It, uh, it's pretty. It's pretty special. Uh, you, you. It's um, a funny story. So I might. I just add as well. Funny story is yeah. that um, I wasn't used to the velodrome and the way it corners. And then I, I was down on the, as you can tell, on the blue area in the flat section. And then I was going around the corner. And um, I mean, I'm used to calling down a hill and I'm leaning in. And um, so I knew that I was going around the corners. And I was almost going like 40 k's an hour sort of thing. And then. I was lucky, I knew it was coming, so I leaned in and I could feel my, because the way the hand sock was, I could feel my wheel come up. And I was like, mm. luckily I was already leaning because I don't have abdominal muscles. Um, I have to be leaning before. If I'm not leaning, then I'm gone. <laughs> so yeah, it's a funny one, it's good fun. So, so you don't have abdominal muscles, right? Okay, so, that, so, so what do you do? What, what, is, what is the area of your body that you strengthen to compensate as best you can. Uh, this is news to me. I had no idea about this in any of the preparation. I, I didn't know that, but it's really interesting because you work so hard. What is it that you focus on to, to help in that, in that area? Yeah, so um, I'm, I might as well add, I forgot to add earlier, I'm a H3 hand cyclist. 
Yep. Um, I mean, they're quite at the high end of the scale. Like there's um, there's five different hand cycle categories. You've got the higher quadruplegy category, the um, lower quadruplegy category, and then um, you've got the paraplegy category, which means you don't have from, um, I think um, basically from here down, you don't, technically you don't have any function. Some people have like a little bit of abs and stuff, but um, you have no core muscles to stabilize you. And then you've got the next category with core and the next is amputee when they're kneeling upright. But basically because of that, I have to work out a lot of my chest. Um, I actually don't have the full range of my chest. The bottom isn't, doesn't function properly. Um, it's because I have a weird spinal injury. I have a C7 spinal injury, um, which is important to notice. Um, and yeah, so I do a lot of, um, I guess, chest exercises. Some of I can do some of my chest, um, a lot of incline stuff because that's how we sit, that's how we're sitting in the bike. Um, you know, seat a row and a lot of lat lat workouts, sort of thing, back workouts, and then um, and then also do bicep bicep curls and tricep um, sort of extensions like skull crushes. They call them. Um, so yeah, do that because they they replicate what's in the bike. So I try and replicate that movement as much as I can. Um, and yeah, I also do a little bit of stabilization like exercises to, to keep my um my back muscles strong because I'm sitting in the chair all day and they they keep me upright so yeah do lots of stuff like that. So that home gym comes in handy then right because you can concentrate on things whenever you, you can train twice a day if you want three times a day whatever but it's uh it's it's handy to have it at home. I got a um I got another photo I want to put up um because this intrigued me as well. Uh so this is this is on your Facebook page um your background or whatever we call it uh, and it's a bit of a rock star shot and I believe uh, it is a it is a your claim to fame you've um, you've been on a TVC yeah I um, saw on Facebook a, a while ago a friend tagged me in this advertisement um, they were looking for someone in a wheelchair and I was like oh, that looks pretty cool I'll give that a shot um, went to the audition and not long after they gave me a call saying I've got it which is cool and then basically it's an NRMA insurance advert. Um, basically, it's about, it's about helping people. And with me, it was, um, oh, my role was, you know, like on a festival sort of thing. And then the people around me are like, oh man, let's lift you. And then they end up lifting me during the advert, those cranes on my wheelchair to make sure I didn't drop. Um, but yeah, they lift me up and then basically we're up there just like, you know, I'm just up there going like that, which is a lot of fun filming it, that's for sure. Um, and then I managed to get another little little gig on a pilot TV show, and then um, and that was sort of it. So I just had the double media, and it was good fun. What was the pilot TV show? Um, it's called Why You Like This, um, and yeah, it's a, I guess it's um, about the LG, LGBT community and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it just goes around that, and I was just a snippet little bit there, sort of thing. So yeah, it was cool. That's terrific. That's terrific. Um, so, chef, youth worker, athlete, actor. Um, are there things you still think you need to do? Like, what's an what's a, an unfulfilled ambition that you might want to try next? I guess. Um, well, I guess I can mention it now. Um, I am studying as well, and um, because I had my spinal injury back in. Um, when I was 17, so I was in year 11. Um, I went I went back to year 12 and um, I guess the school worked out that it probably wasn't, it might have been a bit, been a bit tough to handle the full year 12. Um, so but we did half amount of subjects, it was gonna be over two years, but I, I really didn't like studying back then. So I only did half amount of subjects. So to get into a university course, I have to enter another program called tertiary preparation program. So. I'm currently doing that now, which funny enough is online. I was going to be doing it anyway, so it just slides in perfectly. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that and then I want to study sports science. Um, and basically, I want to learn more about the shoulders, um, especially using like long-term shoulder use in a wheelchair. Um, and then I also wanted to become a personal trainer and then I want to merge my knowledge and eventually help people in wheelchairs and um, after they have rehab and through physical health and mental health um, and do that. So that's that's where my pathway is. I'm aiming to go now. So um, it's probably like three or four years away after I'm finished studying. But um, yeah, that's where I'm, I guess I'm aiming. And then along with you know, going to Europe and ride the Alps sort of thing. So lots of goals, lots of things happening. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, you seem to be a, a person who sets, sets goals and 
mostly gets to them or at least the journey of getting to it is, is part of the fun. Uh, you mentioned role models before um, and you mentioned the support of your family. Um, what, what's the greatest advice you could give uh, to an athlete who, and not necessarily it's going through any particular adversity, it could be mental, right? What, what's the, what, what, what are the one or two pieces of advice that you would give to people to help them reset, get back on track? You know, what, 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 what would they need to do? I think the best thing is just reach out to your, your local community to have one, like for example, Brunswick. And if you don't have one, try, try as best as you can to get one. Um, and don't be afraid to message or talk to anyone for support. I think that's the number one thing. And, um, Especially right now in isolation, you know, motivation's hard. Like, we don't know when we're going to be racing again. It could be soon, it could be later, you never know. Um, so, I guess just, like, you know, the Swift community and all the people jumping online, and, you know, um, I think just reach out to friends, family, and just, um, just try and talk about these things. And, um, yeah, people around you would be surprised by just saying something out loud how much difference it makes. That's great advice, Ed, and we hear it so many times, but not enough people practice it. So to hear it reinforced by, by people like you, I think is very important. Thank you for that. But speaking of Zwift, um, you and I spoke about this, uh, just about the, the, the hidden benefit of the connection of Zwift. You know, I had, I, it dawned on me um, after we started introducing the Zwift rides that we were suddenly getting people on rides who couldn't make it to our Thursday motor pace or couldn't make it till Friday morning ride. And that, that was a really interesting insight for me. So you really believe in that, that community, even though it's virtual, the fact that there are real people in it, you, you're a strong believer that that's a, that's a community that helps bond people. I definitely do. I think, um, cause you know, I, I guess the hardest thing is in some ways it's better. Like, and, and what I mean by that, like it's better inside than outside because Everyone's at difficult, at different weights, different strengths, and all that sort of stuff. So when you go riding with someone, it's really hard to sort of keep a certain pace. And um, something I only found out recently, Dave was the one that told me um, that meetup function where when you can't stop, but basically once you get pedaling, you're all together, you know. So and um, there's new apps now, especially people like hand cyclists like me, where I can talk into I can talk into the app and we can communicate through that way. And um, because I can't take my hands off the pedals while I'm to, to type sort of thing while I'm while I'm pedaling. So, um, yeah, I guess that like it's communi communicating in that way, and you know, and it might be a virtual word, it might not be real, but you know, it's still exciting, and it's just good to ride with people, and um, I guess you're feeling part of the community, and um, yeah, it's a big makes a big big difference. I think. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I was not that excited about the, the platform or any of the platforms, but certainly during this experience, I've become a fan. And for exactly what you say, uh, you know, we had Sarah Giganti join us on our meetup last night. And uh, it's great because in normal circumstances, we wouldn't be able to keep up. But even <laughs> the ones that were struggling, you know, we just kept saying, just just, just keep pedaling because you won't get dropped, you know, and you've got a meetup function where you can see only the riders in your group. You can message each mm -hmm. other. Uh, we've, we've tried the audio, the Discord, etc. It wasn't hugely yeah. popular, but I think we'll reintroduce it because few of us were using it. But um, yeah. yeah, but Sarah's comment after the ride last night was you should use it because it's a lot of fun and their team was using it in their race. Um, and, I, you know, later in the week I'll interview some others and talk about the NRS and, and how they would have communicated to each other as well. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I think it's uh, I think it's great and we'll continue to do those rides regardless of the circumstances outside. I think they're an important feature now that won't go away. We'll obviously change our weighting when you can go outside, you'd rather. But yep. you know, to keep that as a once a week, some sort of anchor ride is a, is a very good idea too, because it's all about community. Um, I mate, think I, I, might, gonna, um, sorry. I, I might just jump in and add, add about community. I guess um, it's it's been amazing in that with Zwift, um, I mean, you can connect with people all around the world. Like, there's another hand cyclist in America, and he saw my, he followed me on Instagram, commented a few of my things, and we're chatting. And then, um, you know, he's getting started out, and he was like, um, he was like, oh, we should go for a ride soon, and all that. And we teed it up, and he likes to ride in the afternoon, which is my morning, so it's perfect for me. It's the same time I ride usually. So, you know, I join him, and then, you know, there's events around the world where you can meet up with people, and 
I think it's um I think it's, it's bringing the world together. You know what I mean? Because the coronavirus isn't just affecting Australia; it's affecting the world. Oh, truly unique times, and and yeah, I, I think people are realizing that, and it it, it, it that's why it will continue because we're we're always going to have this this connection. We're so fortunate in this sport that we've been able to do that. I mean, I feel for people who are swimmers, etc., who you know haven't been able to get the training in that they that they would have um, normally done. I mean, obviously we're missing racing and skills in racing and all those um, handling of the conditions, etc., because we're not using brakes or anything when we're on Zwift. But I mean, for you, when you say you can't take your hands off, you know, that, that that's great training and, and, and it has to be, has to be good for you and will make you better uh, when you, when you get off. So what's the, what's the one race you wish you could do right now if everything was open one race or one ride that you'd love to do now that would just remind you of how beautiful the sport is? I'm going to give you an answer for race and a ride. Um, oh, it's a very, very hard question. <laughs> um, definitely my ride, which I probably will do in a couple of days anyway, um, is riding from my place up King Lake and then around the back down the Plenty Road down the Inbale. That's uh, something I've always wanted to do, but it's just, I love King Lake. Like I, I feel like that's my riding home, and that case is where I achieve all my good results um, around there. And then I guess race-wise, oh, it's insanely hard to say. Um, it was my first race um, ever in a hand cycle. Um, I'd say Ilden. Um, might, might be able to do it, who knows? Um, but yeah, I've, I really want to do that again and um, obviously beat my first ever race, surely I will. Um, and yeah, I guess that's my race, that big. Is that up Skyline? Uh, Eldon, is that is, is that what you cover? You dig up, you climb Skyline up there. Is that um, is that the Eldon? I'm not too sure to be honest with you. Yeah. I just um, it's it's whatever the the usual they usually have it on there. It's the same TT as it was yeah. back in 2016, I think. So um, same. It's like 19 kilometers. Oh yeah, the TT would be yeah. There, there is a bit of a climb there too, and it's a beautiful place. It's a magnificent place to ride a bike. Actually, it's uh, it's so clear, it's so open. The community even likes you which is one of the rare things these days you know you ride into someone's community and not everyone's happy to see you but you know Ilden's great and, and Blackburn Cycling Club run a terrific uh, junior tour there and, and the ITT so they they do, they do a great job uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up um, you, you've been amazing like I, I you 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 take this the right way but you're a sicko seven peaks um, you know you get your home gym you've got the pain face photos you're trying things all the time. And clearly, you know, you play rugby, so you have to be tough, right? Um, there's no question yeah. about that. Do you still love um, rugby? Do you, do you still watch it? And is it a sport that you, you know, because it's very hard not to love rugby, in my opinion. I think it's a great game. Yeah, I still, I definitely still love rugby. Um, you know, I go, I go up and down, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm more into cycling now. It's sort of taken over like Tour de France and everything. It's just, I love it. Um, nothing mm. like it. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I definitely, every year the World Cup, I get really into it. Um, and, yeah, I, I definitely love the rugby sort of thing. I'm actually South African supporter, funny enough. I just love the way they play. No relation to South Africa at all, but it's just, yeah, I feel like I'm one in that sense when I follow them. Um, but, yeah, I think um, I, I definitely would say, well, I guess I'm tough on rugby, but cycling is still more of a mental game sort of thing. And um, it's, I definitely found that harder and took me a while to read that, but, now I love it. I'm addicted to it and uh, all I want to do is get better. Well, once you've ridden a bike and you fall in love with it, you, you, you'll never go back. But just on rugby and just on South Africa, I've been to South Africa. It's a wonderful country. It's, you know, there's got a lot of tension and it's a, it's a complex place. But the, uh, yeah, the Mandela story with the Rugby World Cup win uh, is, you know, um, one that will last forever. It's, it's such, a, such a great moment. But the, the last World Cup victory, uh, I'll send you a link afterwards of uh, the, the team singing the song. It's one of my favourite YouTube clips. When I'm on the train, if I'm not on Zwift and I'm on train or road and I just try and uh, create a playlist of things that are inspirational, just listen to them singing that song. It's just amazing. The passion is just beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I can see why you follow them. I don't know how you can do that over the Wallabies, even though form-wise it would be easy. But, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll address that another time, right? Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the way to finish, um, and I've worked out after three interviews now, and this is the fourth, is it's an awkward way to finish on Zoom, right? 
So you, you usually finish by going, thank you, you're welcome, and then I hit stop. I'm going to let you finish, right? Um, can you just say goodbye to everybody? Because I'm sure there's going to be lots of people that are going to listen in on this. Um, say goodbye and, um, and you, can, you can sign off for us, mate. Okay, yeah, I'd say um, thanks everyone for watching who's watched. Um, and everyone at Brunswick Cycling Club, love you all. Um, it's just, it's very biased, but it's the best best cycling club. Um, so it's about, about the, the fun and the love of the sport, not just about the competition. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for watching and um, see you everyone.